When we talk about how video games change the way we think about stories, it is inevitable that we broach the subject of one genre many of us typically avoid. That's Danny. It should come as no surprise that horror, in all its forms, would at some point manifest in front of the controller. Though many subgenres of horror have prevailed on consoles, the most effective type of horror has been psychological, the kind that really messes with you. Nowhere has this been more apparent than the game series Silent Hill. Now I'm not talking about those atrocious movies that came out a few years ago. I'm talking about the games, the source material. They don't get under your skin through gore or jump scares or horrific looking monsters, though there are a few of those. It gets to you by a tense and ominous atmosphere that has the propensity to warp and mutate when you least expect it. And this has never been as true than with the latest entry. But first, a little backstory. In mid-2014, Konami, a Japanese gaming company, announced that acclaimed filmmaker Guillermo del Toro was collaborating with gaming icon Hideo Kojima to make the next Silent Hills game. Hideo Kojima, to those of you who are not familiar, is famous for imbuing the action video game with cinematic panache in a way no other director had done before. So the prospect of him making a horror video game was quite exciting. But what really interests me is his collaborator, from the crib all the way to age 11, I had what is called lucid dreaming, which means that you dream that you are awake. So I literally saw monsters. For those of you who have lived under a rock for, I don't know, the past decade, Del Toro is arguably the greatest practitioner of gothic horror and dark fantasy since the days of German Expressionism. He is a master at combining the horror of real life and contrasting it with the fantastical and the surreal. Devil's Backbone, Pan's Labyrinth deal both with what it is to be a kid and facing uh, horror in different forms, political, personal, and each of the movies shows one side of the way kids interact with the fantastic, which is a very different way than adults. What results is a rich interplay where both ends of the spectrum thematically mirror and elevate the other. No other director since Terry Gilliam or David Lynch has done this as effectively. So before Silent Hills was slated to release, Del Toro and Kojima slightly launched a demo called PT back in 2014. The game was advertised under the false pseudonym 7780S Studio and to be published as a new horror game from Konami. It turned out after being the demo that PT actually stood for Playable Teaser, and we were actually playing the prelude to the next Silent Hills game. Now before I proceed to talk about PT, it must be noted that the development history surrounding PT and Silent Hills had a tragic ending. Shortly after PT released, Konami cancelled Silent Hills due, as many speculate, to a falling out between Hideo Kojima and Konami. The demo was subsequently removed from the PlayStation Network in a tragic turn of events. Nevertheless, PT left such an impression that despite the fact that it was essentially a demo, it is hailed by many websites as one of the scariest games of all time. What is so fascinating about PT is that it is the quintessential case study of what happens when a cinematic mind directs a video game. PT begins with a contradiction. Waking up in a nightmare. Right off the bat, the game establishes the thin line between the real and the surreal Guillermo del Toro himself typically walks. We enter a hallway of what appears to be a suburban home. The coziness is quickly challenged as we hear the story of a grisly murder that took place in a residential type setting over the radio. on a Sunday afternoon. The tone shifts to that of a crime scene investigation in an instant. We continue to the end of the hallway and go through the next door. Haven't we been here before? That comforting sense of a suburban hallway is challenged even further as we walk down the same hallway as before. This surreal use of repetition attests to Del Toro's wealth of cinematic influences, such as filmmaker Luis Buñuel, who would repeat scenes in his films to distort reality. Um. 
It isn't long before this familiar hallway carries an ominous tone, where one door mysteriously closes, while another opens. We hear a baby crying through the door. We continue to journey through this seemingly perpetual loop where things we once thought familiar begin to mutate. A radio sputters deranged laughter. Cockroaches crawl everywhere, an imagery characteristic of Del Toro's work. And suddenly we see this. Now if this were a movie, I would be quite terrified. However, the effect is compounded by the very nature of a video game. With the medium, PT actively inserts the player into the nightmare. It is his or her choice to brave forward. Before we know it, we encounter this lovely specimen in the bathroom by the foyer. Guillermo del Toro, if you haven't figured it out by watching his movies, is a huge David Lynch fan. Oh, you are sick. So much that he created his own eraser head alien child for Pan's Labyrinth, and a demon fetus for the devil's backbone. So it isn't surprising that we see yet another Lynchian baby motif with P.T. What Guillermo del Toro learned from David Lynch is how to tap into our animalistic fear of watching our offspring deformed in ways we can't comprehend. You can identify a Lynch film the way he uses low frequencies. Low frequencies are disturbing to mammals. You're communicating to a very, very internal part of your being. I think we've seen the worst of this terrifying hallway, until this happens. We encounter the use of bread and blood in a way that's very signature of Guillermo del Toro. Sorry, I had to rip the band-aid off at some point. But here is another classic moment where you feel Del Toro's influence in the ghost design, which evokes the dead orphan's apparition from the devil's backbone, as well as another Lynchian moment that Del Toro could have drawn on for P.T. How'd you get inside my house? You invited me. It is not my custom to go where I'm not wanted. Who are you? Hmm. <laughs> Give me back my phone. I promise that is the last of the scares for this video, but it should be clear what Guillermo del Toro is doing here. Del Toro and his collaborator Hideo Kojima understand the tenuous link binding us to reality, and how easily that link can be tested when we are confronted with the unknown. This is what makes PT so important. It immerses players in the fragile threshold separating our reality from a surreal nightmare. It uses the experiential nature of the first-person perspective to challenge the player's rationality. No single character or figure presents a proxy as we passively and vicariously experience the nightmare. We are thrust into the experience. If it hasn't occurred to you by now, P.T. is not just a video game. <laughs>